Hi guys, this is segment three of unit one, video segment three, carbon cycle. So carbon, you guys probably know, is the main element in life. Everything that is alive on this planet has carbon in it. So that makes our planet very unique. It's found in um, many bio biomolecules, which you learn in biology, um, fats, proteins, DNA, nucleic acids, carbohydrates, um, okay, so that it's found in those mac, uh, macromolecules. Carbon dioxide is a particular gas that a lot of people are familiar with because it is a gas that we exhale and it's a gas that plants in, intake. It's also a greenhouse gas. I'm going to refer to greenhouse gases as GHGs throughout this semester. So as a GHG, it absorbs infrared energy, so it gets a lot of negative press because as you know, we are in a warming um, situation right now, our planet is, and all the GHGs are really looked at um, as, you know, negatively and as maybe a way that we can remove some of those out of there so we can lessen, possibly lessen that, that change. So carbon dioxide will be brought up in another unit called climate change later on. But carbon dioxide is also where we're going to start our cycle. So. If you, whether you were given a template or whether you have to freehand write this, make sure that you include all aspects of this screen. All the boxes represent, for the most part, sinks and um, sources and sinks. And, um, but I want also to draw attention to a couple things I have written around in the margins. Carbon is the basic element of life. Everything alive has it. Carbon is also a greenhouse gas. So those were things that were written um, on the previous slide. I do have a couple of video links that if you have access to my PowerPoints, which are probably on the website, you can check out. This one is very elementary, so if you are struggling with some of these ideas, this is kind of a nice, nice little cartoon to watch. Um, and this is one, this was an assignment that I had my kids do in the past, the Carbon Cycle song they sang for an assignment and they did a good job of including all of it. It's not going to give you a lot of content, but it's just kind of fun to watch. So we're going to start with the atmosphere. That's where carbon dioxide is. Makes up very little of the atmosphere, 0.03%, per, um, I think I heard at one point, so not very much. There are two ways that carbon comes out of the atmosphere and there are five ways that it goes in. So keep that in mind. This is a good way for you to kind of keep it straight in your head, this diagram, in a visual way. Two ways go out, five go in. One of the ways that it comes out is one that you probably can think of right now. From biology, from your experience in biology, you know that plants go through photosynthesis. Plants and phytoplankton, phytoplankton, you guys, is like the um, green algae. Okay, they're going to be the photosynthesizers of the aquatic world, and like plankton from SpongeBob. But anyhow, I've also included some formulas here and equations, so that way you can see where the carbon is. It's in the, it's trapped in the carbon dioxide. It joins with water in the plant and becomes glucose or some kind of carbohydrate. See, there's the carbon right there. This is not a balanced equation, by the way. I just want you to see the carbon there. And then the plants store that as sugars, glucose, and the plants then can be eaten by consumers. If they're eaten by consumers, those consumers, or even the plants themselves, there could actually be a, an arrow coming off of the plants and going to um, death. But the consumers or the plants themselves will die eventually, or um, anyhow, they will die. There is another arrow going up here that I'll get to in just a second. The second way that carbon dioxide comes out of the atmosphere is by being dissolved in water. So carbon dioxide can go in and out of water through this mechanism. So technically, we could put an arrow up into the atmosphere, but for the most part, I would like you guys just to stick to the idea that it's coming out and going into the water. And then from that water, I mean, we have plants that are alive underwater, totally submerged, and how do those plants go through photosynthesis if CO2 is not available? So it is available. It's dissolved in the water, and those aquatic plants take it in. So that explains the arrow going here. 
Um, if plants don't take it in though, there is another process that can happen with the CO2. It can precipitate. This is not rain, friends. Precipitate can also mean um, a solid coming out of solution. So you, it's dissolved and then it becomes a solid and falls out of solution and settles at the bottom. When that happens, this actually forms um, an inorganic limestone. This is the formula. Where's the carbon? There it is. So calcium carbonate is the formula for limestone. And we're gonna, you're going to learn that. You're going to see that more of that in an acid rain experiment. And we'll talk about how unique limestone is with acid rain. So it forms limestone. Because it's part of a rock, you have to consider that the rock cycle, which is a very long cycle, happens. And the volcanoes take that melted magma and outgas CO2. Some of that carbon comes out of the rock material, the magma, and goes out into the atmosphere. So this is one of the arrows. Volcanoes are the source of atmospheric carbon dioxide coming out from the rocks. Um, back to these plants that have stored the sugars and potentially have been consumed. They can either die or produce waste. That would be this box. Or they can just cellular respirate. Plants and animals all cellular respirate. Sometimes we forget that plants do that too. But they will cellular respirate and they look at the outcome right here. CO2 is what comes out. So the sugar that was storing the carbon is broken down through your metabolism and it becomes CO2 which is released to the atmosphere. The dead stuff and the waste will decompose. Decomposers, friends, are cellular respirators. So that is similar to that's this equation. Um, we just have a fancy name, decomposers. Also, if it doesn't decompose and it gets compressed over millions and billions of years, that dead material or waste material can become compacted through major pressure and heat and be become fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gas. The CXHX means that there can be any number of these carbons and hydrogens, but either way, it's a hydrocarbon is what that's called combining with oxygen, being combusted, and you learn the combustion equation in chemistry, so you know oxygen is required for that. So they join forces and they end up, the carbon bonds with the oxygens, and then H2O, water, is also a, a product. So that's going out into the atmosphere, so that's another one of the arrows. So the last arrow, hmm, that is back to these plants, storing the carbon as sugar, what if it gets burned, okay? It doesn't even have to die first, even though that's what the arrow looks like. But forest fires have that trapped carbon in their tissues. This is essentially a combustion reaction. Instead of the CXHX, we have a C6H12. This is just like um, a fuel, only the fuel is called glucose for the plant, and it burns and produces CO2 out into the atmosphere. So five ways going out in the atmosphere, two ways coming in, you guys. Of these ways that we know carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, so of the five ways that carbon dioxide is going out in the atmosphere, which ones or one can humans control? As much as we want to, we can't control volcanoes. Humans if we were not on this planet, there would still be cellular respiration. So we can't really control that even though we are breathers. Decomposition, if we weren't here on this planet, this would still exist. Burning fossil fuels, we are solely responsible for this. So this, this right here, my friends, is going to be our main focus as far as understanding this is a greenhouse gas and trying to relieve that a little bit. This is where we'd have to focus. Forest fires, we do have some control over that you know, personal choices and being careful when out in the woods. But forest fires would really happen even if we weren't on this planet because of dry areas and lightning. Okay, so what are carbon sinks? Think of the sink as a storage. So these are areas that store carbon. Carbon sinks, you guys, can be large scale or even small scale. You, friends, are a carbon sink. So the carbon is transferred into your body and it's also transferred out of your body. But while you're alive, the carbon is stored there for a time frame. And then it can be large scale like the ocean. The ocean having dissolved carbon dioxide in the water, which makes, by the way, carbonic acid. Um, that does, when water mixes with water, it, make, 
when carbon dioxide mixes with water, it makes carbonic acid. And the oceans are huge stores, storage for carbon. They would be a huge carbon sink. Which part of the cycle is controlled by humans? Well, of the five ways that carbon dioxide is going in the atmosphere, we've determined that burning fossil fuels is really primarily solely um, as a result of human activity. So how does the carbon cycle work? Um, I do want you to write this down. This does get a little repetitive from the diagram that we just went through, but I would like you to just I want to draw attention to these particular items because they are going to be um, potential test items, quiz items. So the atmosphere, geosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere all exchange carbon with the idea that this is the Earth system and all these spheres interact with one another. So you could go back to that carbon cycle, which you will do on a future assignment, and you'll look and try to find where, what form does carbon come in in the atmosphere, in the geosphere, in the hydrosphere, in the biosphere, and those forms are exchanged between those spheres. Plants, part of the biosphere, absorb CO2, part of the atmosphere, during photosynthesis. So we can see the sphere interactions here. A term we didn't talk about yet is deforestation. So that's basically when we deforest a forest. We cut down the trees. The problem with this is that the trees are a storage for carbon. They also pull in CO2 from the atmosphere and store as glucose. If we cut them down, they will not pull, pull in the CO2 anymore. And so there's an excess of CO2 in the atmosphere. Another double whammy is when they are deforest, deforesting the forest through slash and burn methods. So um, burning, though, actually releases the CO2 that was trapped as glucose and so it puts more CO2 out in the air because of that burning. Plus, it's not, the trees aren't around to take in the CO2 from the atmosphere. So it's a double whammy there. Animals release CO2 back, animals and plants actually re release CO2 back to the atmosphere during respiration. Rocks and soils, part of the geosphere, okay, containing limestone or another form of carbon, exchange carbon with the water and the plants. We think of the roots absorbing some of that carbon and the water dissolving some of it. Oceans and atmosphere exchange gases, gaseous CO2 back and forth. So we have hydrosphere atmosphere interaction. And the dissolved CO2 in the oceans is caused by phytoplankton, which are marine organisms. We talked about that earlier, the plankton or the um, algae, in photosynthesis. So they pull in the CO2 by photosynthesis. Um, this is a testable item here too. Shells, shelled organisms like clams, snails, anything that has um, the shell has calcium carbonate making up that shell. We talked about calcium carbonate being limestone, the formula for limestone. It's also the formula for shells. So that's a form of organic limestone. Anyhow, the shelled organisms accumulate. They don't decompose really. They can, they can wear down in the presence of an acid, but they really don't decompose. They kind of stay as is. So they drop down to the bottom where they can be cemented together by um, precipitating uh, calcium carbonate from the water. And this cements them together and they can form rocks. So it can store carbon in the shell for a really, really long time. Very big, long carbon sink. And that's it, friends. That's all the carbon cycles. So we'll be working with that a little more in class. Um, make sure you study your diagram and make sure you know those, these points on the slide.